Hey guys, welcome back. We are doing day four of our RERA for Lawn Popo. Today, what I want to work on is some analytical understanding. All right. I know that both the wolf and Shang try to trick someone in Lawn Popo. And we're going to try to figure out who the real trickster is in this story. All right. Now, authors sometimes use tricksters in their stories. Sometimes they're really smart and sometimes they're not. And something different usually happens. So what we're going to do to try to figure out who the trickster is in this story is we're going to do a comparison contrast of Shang and the wolf to see who the real trickster is. So let's start with the wolf. All right. So I have got a page here that I'm going to read and then I'm going to show you the picture. It says, but an old wolf lived nearby and saw the good mother leave. At dusk, disguised as an old woman, he came up to the house of the children and knocked on the door twice. Bang, bang. Shank, who was the eldest, said through the latch door, who is it? My little jewels, said the wolf. This is your grandmother, your popo. Popo, Shang said, our mother has gone to visit you. And this is the page. All right. So the action on this page is that the wolf disguised himself as Popo. That is Shang's, Tao's, and Poets' grandmother. All right. Why did he do it? Well, he wanted to trick the children so he could get inside the house to eat them, right? Okay, well, what do we know about the wolf? Well, we know the wolf is very clever. We know he's very smart. I mean, think about it. He thought about becoming their grandmother just so he could trick them to get in the house, right? The wolf was hungry, so he was willing to do anything just to get in the house. And we also know that the wolf only cares about himself. Hmm. He doesn't care what anybody else is doing, anybody else is saying. He's worried about himself because all he's thinking about is, I want to get in the house and I want to eat those kids. And then his tummy's full, right? Okay. So let's look at another page. Tayo and Pokes rushed to their popo and wished to be hugged. The old wolf held Tayo. Good child, you are so plump. He embraced Pokes. Good child, you have grown to be so sweet. Soon the old wolf pretended to be sleepy. He yawned. All the chicks are in the coop, he said. Popo is sleepy too. When he climbed into the big bed, Pyotes climbed in at one end with the wolf and Shang and Tao climbed in at the other. But when Shang stretched, she touched the wolf's tail. Popo, Popo, your foot has a bush on it. There's the page. All right, so what was going on? On this page, we know that the wolf climbs in the bed and he tells the sisters, oh, you're plump. Oh, you're sweet, right? So he's like, oh, I can't wait to eat them. They are gonna be so yummy. That was the reason right there. Why did he do it? Because he was hungry. He wanted to eat them. He was so hungry. So what do we know about the wolf at this point? Well, he's very clever, isn't he? He's playing the bit to grandma or popo, as they say, very well. Because what grandmother wouldn't say, oh, you're so sweet, honey, right? But I don't think my grandmother would tell me I was plump. 
if my grandmother told me I was, I would be very upset, wouldn't you, Miss Ray? Yes, I would. Yeah, I wouldn't like that part. So what we know is he was hungry and he was clever and he was trying his hardest to get ready to eat them. So let's look at our next with the wolf. The wolf was overjoyed and fetched the basket and the rope, then threw one end of the rope to the top of the tree. Shane caught the rope and began to pull the basket up and up. Halfway, she let go of the rope and the basket and the wolf fell to the ground. I am so small and weak, Popo, Shane pretended. I could not hold the rope on. This time I will help, Tayo said. Let's do it again. And there's that page. Okay. So on this one, the action in this one is the wolf really wanted to eat the ginkgo nuts, right? He was willing to do anything to get those nuts. So why did he want those nuts? Well, do you remember in the text, it said he wanted to be young and live forever because that's what Shane said, that the ginkgo nuts would make you live forever, be youthful, right? And so he forgot all about the kids and he was more focused on the ginkgo nuts at this point in time. So what do we know about him now? Well, he's thinking only of himself right now because he wants to live forever. He has stopped thinking about the girls. He's focused only on the ginkgo nuts and how is he going to get them? I mean, he's willing to actually sit in a basket and have these girls pull him up to get the nuts. So he's wanting their help to do this. Okay, so now let's switch gears and let's talk about Shang. All right, so let me find the page there. The wolf acted surprised to visit me. I have not met her along the way. She must have taken a different route. Popo, Shang said, how is it that you come so late? The wolf answered, the journey is long, my children, and the day is short. And there's the page. Okay, so let's think now what action was going on here. We know that Shang asked the wolf a lot of questions when he first knocked on the door and came into the house disguised as Popo, right? Yes. But why was she doing this? Think about it. She wasn't convinced that that was her Popo at the door because it was really late and I bet her Popo never came that late, right? So what do we know about Shang here? We know that she's very smart and she wants to keep her family safe. She wasn't convinced to let him in the door, was she? No, she thought it was kind of strange. So she was very hesitant. So a very cautious person, okay? So let's look at another page here. Popo has brought hemp strings to weave you a basket, the wolf said. Shang touched grandmother's shark claws. Popo, Popo, your hand has thorns on it. Popo has brought you an awl to make shoes for you, the wolf said. At once, Shang lit the light and the wolf blew it out again, but Shang had seen the wolf's hairy face. All right, so let's think about the action here. We know Shang remained calm when she realized the wolf was disguised as Popo. Now, if you saw a wolf in your bed, would you be calm? I know I wouldn't, I would not. And why do you think she remained calm for? Do you think maybe 
if she showed that she was afraid that he would go ahead and eat them, maybe. And maybe she kept saying clever things to distract him possibly. So she had to be brave, didn't she? She had to be very clever. She had to think under pressure and not lose it. Well, I think I would have probably already lost it. I'd have probably already been eaten. And then he'd probably have spit me out because he wouldn't have liked me. Because I wasn't, I wasn't sweet and plump. But she was very clever and she cared for her family. So that's a good sign. She was thinking under pressure, didn't look, and so she was trying to distract him. So let's look at another page here. Now the children pulled the rope with all their strength. As they pulled, they sang, hi yo, hi yo, and the basket rose straight up, higher than the first time, higher than the second time, higher and higher and higher until it nearly reached the top of the tree. When Wolf reached out, he could almost touch the highest branch. But at that moment, Shane coughed and they all let go of the rope and the basket fell down and down and down. Not only did the wolf bump his head, but he broke his heart to pieces. So on this page, Shang saves herself and her sisters from the wolf. Why did she do this? Well, we know she loved her family and she's taking care of them because mom's away. She's the eldest, meaning she's the oldest, so it was her job to watch over the kids, all right? With her being older, that made her wiser and smarter and that she knew what she was doing to protect her family, okay? In the end of this story, my question is raised who is the real trickster in this story? Is it actually the wolf or is it actually Shang? Hmm. I think that the real trickster is Shang. Started out being the wolf because he was pretending to be Popo, but Shang took over. She was very clever and very wise in her doings. She went from knowing it was a wolf in their house to thinking, what can I do to get him out of my house to save my family? So I think she was the real trickster here. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I will see you back here tomorrow. Bye.